Today, we're gonna multiply and simplify roots. And I decided to take these two concepts and just combine it into one video because they go hand in hand. So if you wanna simplify a root, you will probably need to multiply in some shape or form. So let's learn how to multiply roots first, and then let's take a look at how to simplify a root. And if you would like to learn more about roots, you can now join my Math Fundamentals 101 course. You'll also get a free textbook I wrote and a modern real life approach to all the important math concepts that you need in life. If you have two numbers being multiplied under a radical sign, what you can do is separate them into their own roots and multiply those out. So for example, if we have the square root of two times three, this is the exact same thing as the square root of two, times the square root of three. And you can also do this for a lot of numbers as well. If we have the square root of nine times three times two times 10 times five, this is the exact same thing as the square root of nine times the square root of three times the square root of two times the square root of 10 times the square root of five. And the cool part is we can also go backwards. So this time, if we start off with two separate square roots, this will be the same as the square root of seven times eight. And here's another thing we should probably talk about. If you multiply the same exact square root of the same exact number twice, it will just be equal to that number. But now what if we have cube roots instead of square roots? Since we have cube roots this time, which is the third order root, we're gonna need three of them, which makes sense, doesn't it? And how many of these fifth roots of 102 would we need to equal 102? This time we will need to multiply five of them to equal 102 because we're dealing with the fifth order root. And I think you have the gist of it now. So let's take a look at how we can use that to simplify roots. Here is the square root of 27. If I ask you to simplify this for me, what exactly am I asking you to do? We need to see if there are any perfect squares like four, nine, 16, 25, and so on, hidden inside that 27 and then pull them out. Kind of like pulling out a tooth or fishing for something. And if that didn't make any sense, don't worry, we're about to go through all of this. So the first thing you want to do when you simplify a root is to factor down that 27. So what two numbers can multiply together to make 27? Well, nine times three equals 27, right? So we can turn the square root of 27 into the square root of nine times three. And now what do we do from here? We can apply the multiplication rule we learned from earlier and change this into the square root of nine times the square root of three. And looking at this, do you see any perfect squares we can pull out? Well, nine is a perfect square since the square root of nine equals the square root of three times three, and that is just equal to three. And now let's multiply back in the other root of three. And by the way, this three and the square root of three, they're being multiplied together, but I didn't draw a multiply sign in between them. And that's totally okay. And what I love about roots. Now, are there any more perfect squares that you see over here we can pull out? Well, the square root of three is not a perfect square. So this is fully simplified. So we just went from the square root of 27 all the way down to three times the square root of three and both of these have the same value, we just simplified it down. So to summarize, whenever you simplify a root, first factor out your radicand, then multiply the roots out, and then pull out any perfect squares that you see. And one thing you should know is that sometimes your root will already be simplified. If I ask you to simplify the square root of five, there are no perfect squares we can pull out. So this root is already simplified. 